I kept thinking over everything that has ever been since Jonathan came to see me in London, and it all seems like a horrible tragedy, with fate pressing on relentlessly to some destined end. Everything that one does seems, no matter how right it may be, to bring on the very thing which is most to be deplored. Since this is a video on Dio and Phantom Blood, you may be asking yourself, well, I don't remember this quote, maybe this was in some notebook excerpt in the manga. It's not. This is a quote pulled straight from Bram Stoker's Dracula, and it, out of context, it doesn't make any sense because it's a female saying it. So yeah, there are some similarities. Well, for one, we have a character named Jonathan with a strong will and confronts a vampire with a very evil and dark soul. Uh, both the vampires have a name that starts with D, and the same Jonathan also stabs the vampire in the neck? Rocky! Rocky, are you robbing me? No, 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 dude, I, I swear, it's just a coincidence. Yeah, yeah, no, I believe you, but what about that one time you said that Phantom Blood shares the same similarities as Dracula and Fist of the North Star? Oh, dude, you know, I was, I'm just messing around. Okay, I might have stolen Jesus. Dio Brando is one of, or if not the most powerful person in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Not powerful as in strength, but powerful as in power. Power in leading, power in fear, and a power that transcends physical presence. Dio doesn't need to be alive to have an effect over those in the living world. He's a being that sets so many plans that would work with him being dead or alive. And it's even pretty easy to say that he did more when he was dead than when he was alive. Though how is it possible to do so much? Is it just due to him being an intellectual being? Possibly, but being an intellectual being wouldn't be enough to do everything that he did. Dio had done something that none of us can physically do on the same scale as him. Dio has transcended past humanity. What does this mean? To most, it would just be symbolism for him rejecting his human form and transforming into a vampire, which would be higher than a human on the food chain, but I don't think that's what he means. The answer lies in the many things Dio has done. This isn't on the many people he's executed or drank, but those that he had kept alive. Ideals of vengeance, steps to a better future, or even friendship. Or whatever that was, that, that, that whole scene in itself is kind of a mystery to me. Being evil has been affiliated with being a killer of sorts and having plans of trying to execute more people on a larger scale. A lot of villains want to destroy the earth. A lot of villains want to take over the earth. A lot of villains want the lower class to take over everything above, which I, I guess you couldn't even call those villains. But what about the other type of villains? There are many types, but I want to talk about those that want the best for the world. But they achieve that through the most heinous of ways. Dio is one of those villains. Not Dio Brando, but the mature Dio. Imagine that everyone in the world could see their fate, while thinking that seeing your fate would cause you to try to change it. What if your fate had already taken that into account? How do we not know that us being the sentient beings we are is an illusion? What if everything we're doing and everything that happens to us is our subatomic particles acting in a specific order that had already been set for us? Would you continue to live your life if fate told you that everything you're going to do is futile to what happens to you in the end? It's genuinely puzzling for me because I'm not even sure how I'd be able to even comprehend that. Dio had wanted us to see our fate and not waste any time living futile lives because, at that point, why even continue to suffer? Dio has this god complex without even trying to. I mean, his name even means Dio. He happens to just understand everything on a higher plane. Can I even say that the goal of this version of Dio had created his evil? Or is it somewhat of a blessing? I have this respect for this version of Dio, a person sculpted by the time he had to think in solitude. He had developed this more matured mindset with a plan that would impact the whole world once he touches back into it. That's Dio, but who is Dio Brando? Well, let me ask a question to set perspective. Say that life is bad and always possible. Everything that could go wrong went wrong. Your job as someone who wants to continue living is to fight through all that wrong that's being thrown at you. But while having all this bad, you have one good thing in your life. This one thing had been there for you forever, and would never willingly leave you. That's until this one thing is beaten furiously and perishes. The one thing keeping you intact had been taken away from you, and you're forced to continuously live with what had caused them to die. You have all the reason to be furious and even hate the world that you live in, 
But what do you do? Do you exact revenge on the world that had taken everything from you? Or does the world deserve to be made better so that no one else experienced what you had experienced? The second option seems most honorable and hopeful, but why would you go for the second one? If the world has only given you bad, why try to make it good for everyone else? Why not make it just good for you? Why not make it work under you? Since you're the only person looking out for yourself in this problematic world. You deserve better. You are the number one of your life. Matter of fact, you will be the number one of all of life. There will never be wrong in the world for you if you own it all. They're giving you the chance to do so. Will you take it or live how you do? Dio Brando had made this decision. A child raised in the darkest slums of London, raised by an unfit father, and had lost his mother at an early age. The only one who had seen any good throughout his whole childhood. While he was only raised on the streets, he had become this cunning teenager over time, poisoning the father that had caused him grief, which would have left him to a less annoying life alone, but the debt of George Joestar had ended up being the opportunity that Dio wanted and needed. During the years in the Joestar Manor, Dio had helped with growing more than focusing on his own growth. He had originally believed that it wouldn't be that difficult to raise through the ranks of life. He believed that because there hadn't been someone that he saw as a match to him. If it wasn't for Dio contributing to Jonathan's development, he wouldn't even stand a chance in the future. Jonathan had matched Dio's intent and intellect with will and conviction. Seeing that since he could be matched, the only way to get Jonathan out of the way would be to kill him, but that wasn't going to be easy since he had been figured out. So, what's one to do in that situation? Well, I thought about this in a different way. As a human, or as any living being on the real earth, there will always be something or someone that can match you or something else. For a strong lion, there will be a strong lion. For a smart person, there will be someone that either matches them or even exceeds them. Dio was on the same level of ground as any other human being, even though he had attributes that puts him ahead of many, he was still human. Quoting from Dio specifically, there is a limit to human ability. As a human, he will share the same limitations as anyone else. But what if he can transcend that? Which he does. With his newfound power, he had shown the large difference between humans and vampires. Even with those differences, he was still put down by a human Jonathan. This alone shows where Dio stood and would stand for the rest of the franchise. Attempting to put himself ahead of the game, and it worked against a large amount of beings, but he always found himself being checked by those with bigger limitations on them. He had crossed so many lines to put himself ahead of others, even by doing the most immoral things, but all of those things had contributed to those working against him. By doing evil, he had made the power of good even stronger. While I couldn't agree with the things that Dio had done, or even a lot of villains do, I can appreciate what they're unintentionally doing. It's fine to have evil in the world because all of the evil contributes into making good stronger. Even if there's a world where evil rules over all, there will be an underdog of conviction. That's how it goes in fiction. Bars. Unless you have some story where- <laughs> I'm sorry. Unless you have some story where nothing gets better and it's just spiraling down a hole of despair because that's- That's just, that's just terrible. Why would I want to read something like that when I can just experience everything going wrong with myself? Like, I, I have non-existent children to feed. Please follow my Twitch. Dio had pushed people to their limits, and they broke those limits just because their conviction was strong enough. He had unintentionally got a group together that was meant to destroy him. He had unintentionally created the exact opposite to him that had beaten him, despite him winning in the complete end. Even then, he respected his counter and became him, but even then, he was countered again. There will always be a counter out there. It's possible that they don't exist at the moment of evil happening, and maybe they're raised under those wanting to defeat said evil. Remember, corruption breeds conviction. That's not a quote from someone, I'm trying to remember something, but it's, it's extremely vague. It's probably not even corruption, maybe, maybe cataclysm, or a chaos, or a crisis, or cruelty. Maybe it was cruel angel thesis, I don't know, you get the point. I hope you guys enjoyed this all though because good, evil, all that, it's just, it's beautiful. 
Although, it, it wasn't that scary for being a Halloween special. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next one, though. So until then, peace out, and hail Cthulhu. You're, you're still here? I, I don't have a jump scare. It's crazy, I didn't really think people would be out here. I feel like Deadpool at the moment. Um, hi, how's your day? Oh, if, if you're here right now, uh, leave a comment, like, uh, I, I can't, I can't think of something on the spot. Um, do hashtag Dioween. It's like, like Halloween, except Dio. Yeah, yeah.